Rory. Yeah. Is your staff will be all this on air? Yeah, well, maybe we'll go on the knee. Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been an emotional sort of couple of weeks. How are you holding up? Um, yeah, pretty good. I mean, um, something I never thought I'd do. Uh, always thought my body, I've taken pride in my body, um, holding up over the years. And yeah, um, probably a little bit shocked at the start, but um, oh, immediately your thought process just goes, oh, what can I control and how's this going to look on return? Um, and that's been, that's just a goal from literally the day after surgery is like, how am I going to best prep for round one next year? The, um, the, the incident itself, it, it felt pretty innocuous and, and you know, a lot of your teammates weren't aware. Can you, sorry to go back, but can you sort of describe that, that feeling in those moments and telling your teammates what you thought was probably the outcome in the address? Oh, I knew straight away, like you could feel, from what everyone's explained to me, um, when that happened, I sort of knew, I felt that I felt that pop, I felt something go on inside the knee and then um, yeah, once I got onto the bench the docs sort of reaffirmed that with a little test and um, I was sort of just honed in on the game because it was such a big game for us and we are playing such good footy, I just, yeah, just wanted to see a great result which we got, um, not only against Richmond but last week against the Doggies as well so it was uh, as frustrating, frustrating as it is watching footy, I certainly love watching the boys get that win in Ballarat. A couple of your teammates have done similar things and said the biggest hurdle that you have to get over is just coming to terms with the fact that you won't play footy for a year. How, how's that journey been for you? Well, I've heard it's been described as a bit of a, a roller coaster up in the, the Gold Coast at times. You sort of you ride it up and down. I'm sorry, I'm taking the piss out of Tex there. I'll stir him up later. Just wanted to get that in. Um, now, look, there's so many people to lean on. The footy community is so good at reaching out to one another. Um, I've, I've had so many players reach out that have experienced the same thing um, either at the start or end of their careers. So it's more about just probably gathering knowledge and, and thoughts and, and then just dissecting them and seeing what will work for me. What are you allowed to do in terms of getting up for some of the Right now? Yeah. Uh, not much. Um, I've sort of been on the couch. Uh, I've been resorting to just taking photos, really, of the kids. Um, my poor wife's been running around everywhere with my mum just looking after the kids at the moment. So. I've literally just been enjoying just spending some time at home and um, being, a, being a spectator to life of the kids and yeah, I've gotten behind the lens of the camera, which um, Sarah will be happy about, I reckon. Where's she gone? She's disappeared. Sarah will be happy about it, but at the moment, not much. Rory, what was it like when the docs saw the scans and said, it is done? Did you, I mean, you say you felt, but when it's confirmed, is it a little harder to take? Uh, no, nah, I was sort of, I, yeah, I knew, I knew coming off the ground that was sort of the last time for the year. Um, so that was probably the hardest bit. The scans re reaffirmed it, but by then I'd sort of already processed it. Um, and I was already thinking about, all right, this is going to be a great opportunity to sort of freshen up, get the body right and, and launch into next season. So, um, yeah, by the, by the time I got the scans, I was sort of already looking at, all right, what's it going to look like post-op? Um, you say it was the hardest thing leaving the ground. What was, what was difficult about it for you? Um, Oh, you just look around at the fans and that atmosphere, that environment around the guys after a really solid, hard-fought win against Richmond is, that's the stuff I love about footy, so. Um, but it's also the driving force of why you want to return fitter than ever. What was, uh, what was watching Ballarat like? <laughs> <laughs> no, first game's always hard when you're injured watching footy, but um, it's, yeah, it's, I'm no good at, at watching. But it was, yeah, it was great to see the boys get a win. We haven't beaten the doggies for a few years now, um, and they've touched us up a few times. So to see us win and win the way we did, um, I was pretty proud. I remember, it was it when you broke your thumb or an, or an eye? So you, you coached or did some stuff in Sydney. The game at the SCG a few years back, you were sitting in the coach's box. I think it was. Will you do you have plans to do that as the season progresses here? Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, it's something I'd love to explore is a bit of coaching and. Um, it's how can I best sort of influence my leadership too um, throughout a season where I won't be able to play. So, I mean, sitting on the bench would be, I'd love to do. Um, there's stuff like that I'll explore and see what options um, that I'm actually allowed to do. The, um, the, the captaincy by committee that we've got in place now, that the, the four leaders for the rest of the year, on, you, you are coming towards the end of your career. How do you feel the club's place with guys like that in terms of future leaders and the guys after you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm. Um, I'm still a skipper for this season. That's that's going to be my focus for this year. Is how best can I help this team out whilst I'm not playing, um, and that's exciting for me too because that's that's some work, that's some stuff there I've wanted to 
to look into um, for a while now and just dive dive right into and, and share the knowledge and experiences that I've had over the years and that's that's going to be my focus but yeah the four guys you mentioned and I've mentioned this at the start of every season we, we don't just rely on that leadership group we've got so many other leaders and we need everyone to really chip in and lead throughout the season if we want to be a successful team. Um, you, you said you are, you, you are captain for this year. I mean, Nick's sort of alluded to the fact that maybe at, at the end of the season there will be some sort of changeover. Is that something you'd consider or, or not having those conversations yet? No, so that's, for me, my focus is solely on this year and as I said before, how I can best influence this group um, whilst not playing. Um, there's still so much influence you can have and the majority of leadership I've sort of focused on has been off off the field and away from games as well. So yeah, I'll just hone in on that. The, um, when are you targeting? When are you hoping to feedback by? Is round one possible? Uh, round one's definitely possible. I think. Um, again, that's me saying that. That's I'll talk to the surgeon, but um, that's sort of the little goal I've got. Definitely back of my mind is how a little challenge for myself is how fit and fresh can I possibly be coming into round one next year and. And we'll go from there. What's hard for you now, mate? This is just you know getting up off the couch and going to the fridge is a challenge. Um, the hardest bit is having people do stuff for me. I think it's yeah being dependent on other people. I'm not I'm a pretty independent person, I suppose. And oh, like I love making a coffee and then just having coffees made for me. I'm very grateful for it, but there's stuff I like doing as well. But it's just the hardest bit for me is literally watching um, yeah my wife and my mum sort of do everything around me while I just sort of sit back and watch. So um, I try and stay out of the way as much as I want to sort of be watching everything too. You've got a, a bit of a groove going on the couch? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I'm trying to mix up the couches. There's the outdoor couch, a uh, lounge room couch, and then yeah, one other in the house I try and, no, try and rotate couch, through. Yeah, Bodie's obviously too young. He, he doesn't get it. He, he head butted. He went straight for the head butt on it the other day, which is kind of cute and frustrating. Um, but Sonny gets it, Sonny understands. He's, he's trying to kiss my knee better at times, which is really cute as well. So that, that again, it's like I know the boys being at the age they are now, I'll never get this time back again. And I'm, yeah, it's pretty nice to be able to spend this time um, watching them grow up. And especially, as I said before, being a spectator to life in their eyes at the moment has been really nice. Do you have a timeline on, on when you're able to do stuff? Is, you know, in a, a month, can you walk without the brace or has, has that been explained to you at all? Yeah, the, the aim is about three, we three or four weeks in the brace. Um, yeah, and I'll ditch a crutch pretty soon, I think. You've got such a team with a pretty positive outlook on it. Was there, was there ever a time, given where you're at in your career, where you thought, you know, this, this might be the end or is that, that crushing your mind? No, nah, only probably the the eye socket injury last year, realising that that could have been um, loss of sight. That was probably the only moment I've ever had in my career where it's like, well, an injury like that can mean um, the end of the end of your career and loss of sight, more importantly. But now with one like this, this is, again, I'll, I'll probably repeat myself, but, um, and I've had physios and our whole HPT staff reinforce this, that having 11, 12 months to get as fit and fresh as possibly can, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a huge amount of time to, to get pretty healthy, so uh, I'll look forward to sinking my teeth into it. Great. Are there many injuries you've got left? You've picked up a few. No, I've been really lucky. People have said that, but it's big saucy. Um, yeah. I've, uh, I've been lucky. I mean, all my injuries have been more facial, I suppose. Um, this has been the, probably the one generic football injury I've ever copped. Um, which, yeah. You've got one year left in 2023. How much more football do you think you do have left in you? Well, that's it. The challenge for me, I'm more focused on how I present myself by round one next year, and then I'll go from there. But the challenge is just, as I said, get as fit and fresh as possibly, as, or more as I ever have. Um, and then what happens after that, I'll just continue to enjoy my footy. And yeah, I love playing footy, so I'll, uh, I'll get the most out of this body. And just one captain to a former captain, can I just ask about Erin dividing the club? I mean, she's probably given everything she possibly could have for the women's team, you, you couldn't begrudge her a fairy tale ending at four? No, nah, not at all. I mean, there's obviously the family ties there too, which um, she'll really enjoy going back there. But I mean, on behalf of our footy club, we couldn't thank Erin enough for all she's achieved and, and done for the sport, um, AFLW in itself. I mean, yeah, what a person. It's been a pleasure to get to know her personally on a personal level too. And yeah, what a person, what a footballer. And 
Uh, it'll make showdowns a little bit more spicy, I suppose, as well. So I look forward to watching those. But knowing our group, they've never relied on any one player, and it's going to be they're a very positive, um, upbeat group, and yeah, they're going to enjoy playing footy regardless.